Hi everybody, my name is Jason DeWild and I'm the Head of Audio here at the Australian Institute of Music and welcome to another series of Micro Lectures. This time round, we're going to be looking at Pro Tools and a beginner's guide to that system. So whether you've had little experience or no experience at all on this system, we're going to take you through that right now. In the first lecture, we're going to be looking at a little bit about the navigation, how to get around in Pro Tools and introduce you to the main windows and some of the things and some of the main tracks that you'll see uh, inside this system as well. So here we go. Okay, so um, here we are with the, a Pro Tools session. Um, basically, Pro Tools has got really two main windows. Uh, the one that we're looking at at the moment is the edit window and um, pretty much 90% uh, of your work probably could be actually even done in this window um, but for ease of use and for just kind of making things a little more uh, simpler um, uh, we're going to look at the other window as well which is called the mix window and this is what the mix window looks like as you can see it looks like a standard you know, virtual mixing console that you might see in, in a studio. Um, now you'll notice that I've flipped between these pretty easily. Uh, um, now I'm not really hugely into people memorizing shortcuts, but definitely this is one you're gonna have to really get it used to. Um, to flip between them is command equals. So if I wanna go to the mix window, it's command equals. Um, and that's really the quickest way to get there. I mean, you can go down the window menu, but really not no much point doing that. Okay, so just a brief uh, whirlwind tour through the edit window. Um, here is your main counter. So this is um, pretty much determines where you are in a particular track. So when I click anywhere, it tells me that I'm at bar 55, bar 30, etc., etc. So this is your main time counter. Um, through here, the main edit window is obviously taken up by the different uh, audio tracks. Um, and this will include every single type of track. So you can see down here, I've got um, what's called an auxiliary input track. Here is an instrument track, and we'll get into all those a little bit later. And there's basically an audio track, some more auxiliary inputs, and a master fader down the very bottom. So this is pretty much where all the real estate is, it takes up with your screen. Um, Okay, so then you've got uh, transport controls through here. Um, and if you don't see those transport controls, this is actually by a drop down menu on the far right hand side of the edit window. And it says make sure you have the transport controls ticked. Right, if you don't have it ticked, it disappears. And if you do have it ticked, there it is. Okay, um, then as we uh, go through here, on this side we've got a number of tools and the number the tool I've got at the moment is the selector tool um, now the selector tool is very very useful because what it does is it just helps you to highlight different sections of the music and what we do with those um, highlights is um, is a matter for, for editing or something like that um, but what I'm doing now is what's called making selections and so all I'm doing is clicking and dragging to make the selection using the selector tool the selector tool also helps you to navigate around the session. So when I want to play from bar 19, I can just play from, I can just play from bar 19. Um, so the selection just helps you, to, I guess, to fast forward or rewind throughout the, the session and on the edit window. So this is, I actually find them the sort of quickest way to get around to different parts of the song. Show you. Waiting to take flight. You made me okay, so... Um, the other tool that you will end up using quite a bit is this one. It's called the Grabber tool. And what the Grabber tool is, it highlights complete regions or complete clips. And when you um, highlight a complete clip, you can actually move it, you can copy it down, you can do any sorts of those types of things um, with a complete clip. So, the, so that's what the Grabber does. It's a hand tool, so just think about that it is just grabbing material. The other main tool that you'll uh, use quite a bit in this uh, window is the trimmer tool, which is this one here. And uh, for now, all the trimmer tool does is it trims off the beginnings or ends of the clips that you have on your edit window. So it's just trimming the end. All right, you can make a pretty substantial trim by kind of getting rid of quite a lot of that material. Um, but 
you can also, um, although it looks like this material is actually lost, never fear, because the trimmer tool also allows you to trim outwards to get the material all back again. So the trimmer tool is just a quick editing tool to kind of like hone in and just remove the rubbish or whatever, some material either side of the clip. Okay, so those are the three main tools, the selector, the grabber, and the trimmer. There are other tools here, which we'll get into perhaps a little bit later, or it's maybe a little bit out of the scope of here. Okay, moving down the edit window, we've got um, the rulers, and there are a number of rulers um, associated with Pro Tools. At the moment, I've got four rulers um, visible here, which is the bar and beats ruler, I've got the minutes and seconds ruler, a tempo ruler, and a markers ruler. So um, the bar and beats one yeah, is obviously uh, counting out our bar and beats, how many seconds we are. And notice that when I flip onto a um, one of these rulers, it actually changes the main counter. So anything that's grey is actually in conjunction with the main counter up here. So when I flip to bars and beats up here, it makes the main counter read bars and beats as well. If you don't see any of these rulers, then there is a drop down menu right here, right, which will allow you to make visible various rulers. And you've got um, the time signature, keys, chords, um, various other sort of time based rulers here so um, for music I tend to um, stick to bars and beats most of the time occasionally minutes and seconds um, and generally if there are tempo changes I'll also um, show my tempo ruler here my tempo at the moment is at 95 beats per minute and we'll get into more of that a little bit later the markers ruler is very very handy um, if you use markers and you can see that I've actually got a number of markers on this particular track um, that showed me you know the start of the song the first chorus um, the interlude verses etc etc so the markers are very good to just sort of quickly visualize where um, parts of the track are if you aren't using any markers and for now I won't show you how to get that all, all going but if you aren't using any markers it's better actually to hide that ruler by going up here and just sort of disabling the markers ruler and now the markers disappear one thing about the edit window is that it's very important to um, get as much screen real estate as you possibly can because this is really where a lot of the your visual communication, your visual feedback on your Pro Tools session is going to be. So we want to try and see as much, many of these waveforms as possible. So that's um, really a, uh, a sort of thing. So anything you kind of don't need, um, always a good idea to, to sort of get rid of. Okay, so um, so that's the sort of the main tools that I've explained here before. Okay, um, there are other small things that you might find here in the um, in the edit window, and that might look different to what you're looking at at the moment. So here are my tracks, right, all the way down, and there's quite a few of them. Um, but to sort of get an overview of that we also have a tracks list. If you can see down the bottom left hand corner, there's a little um, pointer, a little arrow, and that will expose the tracks list here. And you can see that I've got um, basically all of my tracks um, are in the session, right? All of my tracks are just located, here. it's just mirrored here. Now you will see that on this tracks list, there are some gray buttons and then there are some light gray buttons here. So the light gray buttons basically mean that these tracks are hidden. And you, even though they are in the session, they're not actually visible. So that's all what that, that means. And so if I want to, here's the click, the kick track. If I want to hide that, I can just literally just click there. And now the, the kick track is gone uh, from, from screen, but still actually active. So I'm just going to hide that, unhide that again. So that's just quickly what the what those gray buttons are, those gray uh, dots are there on the tracks list. Down okay. here, another thing that you're going to see on the left-hand side of, um, of the edit window besides the tracks list is this section here. This is the groups list. Um, <clears throat> you can see I've got a number of groups here. Um, so what the groups allow you to do is to uh, modify uh, different uh, 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 tracks all at the same time so if I was to enable my drum group for example when I make a selection you'll see that it actually just 
um, enables or makes a selection across all my channels assigned to that group. Um, that's useful for, particularly for editing. So if I want to sort of get rid of an entire section of the drums, I can just highlight it and hit delete and that entire section goes. So um, it's very, very useful to make um, uh, sort of multiple changes across groups of instruments. So I normally do one for drums, piano, backing vocals, etc., etc. And this applies also to the mix window as well. So if I um, turn up my uh, kick drum, you'll see that all the um, members of the group do the same thing. So very, very kind of useful. Um, if you, one of the dangers is this all group. <clears throat> make sure for 90% of the time you don't highlight that because if you have a look here, you know, it just changes everything together and that ca can be a little bit dangerous. So uh, where you need the all group, switch it on, but generally have the all group turned off. So now um, let's have a look at the other window. So I'm going to flip oh, the other thing. Sorry, one more thing about the edit window on this side is the regions list. It used to be called the regions list, so if you have to forgive me, if an old dog like me still keeps calling it the regions list, but technically now it's called the clips list. And this is where all of your clips uh, associated with the session are going to be found. Now, these clips, um, we're going to talk a little bit about these as well. Um, but this is just you know, wherever a, a region is, whether it happens to be in the actual window itself or not in the window, those clips will be highlighted here. Okay. All right, quick little tour of the mix window. All right, so again, command equals on a Mac to get that across. Um, quick tour of this, you've got the track names, all right, and these are in the order as listed in the, um, in the edit window as well. So it's all the same. Um, you have fader, mute, solo, a record button, a pan button. These are the insert slots, and so here is where various plugins get inserted onto the track, um, such as EQs, compressors, and things like that, um, so that they so that the track gets processed through that EQ. We're going to talk quite a little bit about those, um, and here we also have the send section. So this is. Um, sort of on the, an analog console typical to what's called an auxiliary send um, and this allows us to send the signal off to different areas within Pro Tools and we will talk about that on a section in mixing which is coming up as well. Okay, um, I'm showing here the comments so I've got some various comments on virtually on my tracks and again maybe about saving yourself some real estate there's a little drop down menu here that allows you to either show comments track color etc etc so you can show or hide various things to keep uh, things in order and is getting as much of this screen real estate as you can possibly get each of the tracks has got an input and output as well, and this is going to be useful. The input's going to be particularly useful when we're doing recording. The output, as you can see, all of these tracks go to something called the Stereo Master. And this actually relates to the output um, of my audio interface, my main two outputs of my audio interface, and allows us to hear the actual mix and the actual session itself. So eventually, the, these tracks will go to a, a master fader that then come out of the audio interface outputs. So that's a quick navigation. Um, so just a couple more things to kind of get you started. Um, so you to get you started anywhere, you just click wherever you want to play it from and hit play, and that will. I want to take hold of my life. Want to let it go and just fly. Don't want to be stable. So I can click anywhere in the track and get it started. All right. And I'm actually just pressing the space bar. I'm sure you would have figured that one out um, by now about how to get things going there. Okay, so we've seen how uh, Pro Tools can uh, play. Um, now, one of the things that uh, some students uh, they always ask me about is a little problem that occurs um, when playing back Pro Tools. This is the way it should normally happen by default. So watch what happens when I press play. So I'm just here at verse 3. Watch what happens. Show you. I'm waiting to take flight. Now when I press stop, you made me see 
you'll notice the cursor goes right back to where we started it from. So this allows us to play the same section over and over again. Now occasionally what happens is that um, this button underneath the pencil tool gets pressed. So if I was to press that now, have a look what actually happens to the cursor when we press play. So I'm press play. Show you That's all normal. Waiting to take flight. But when I stop it, you'll notice that the cursor actually moves up to where we uh, to the point where we stopped it from. And this becomes a little bit of annoying because it just means that if I really wanted to go back to the verse one, I have to re-click it again and play back to the to the verse again. So um, the this kind of acts like a bit of a sort of a pause button and which is um, can be a little bit annoying uh, f at times. So so what I'm going to do is just unhighlight that. So just make sure if that's kind of happening to you, just unhighlight that. And now when we press play Show you. and I'm press stop, it'll just go back to where we played it from. This occurs um, sometimes accidentally without you even knowing about it because um, the letter N on the computer keyboard does the same thing. It switches on that mode on and off. So sometimes when you're pressing spacebar and you've got clunky fingers like me, I accidentally press the N button while I'm doing that and uh, accidentally switch on that mode. So just be a little bit wary of that one. Okay, so the next uh, lesson, we're going to talk about some file management and some session stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Check you later. So I hope you enjoyed that first installment of a beginner's guide to Pro Tools. There's more to come. Also, don't forget, we've got a whole range of other micro lectures to check out, and you can check them out right here. Till next time, see you later.